Welcome back to the fourth in a series on optimization. Today we're going to consider the problem. Let's say you have a hundred thousand players in your game, and they each have a score, which means you have a hundred thousand scores. And our problem is we want to make a leaderboard. where the players with the highest scores will appear in this leaderboard and everybody will be able to see what position they are according to what score they have. And they can fight for the highest position in the scoreboard um, on the leaderboard. So we need to make an algorithm that will take all 100,000 of our players and sort them by who has the highest score. And 100,000 is a lot of players, so we want to make sure that we have efficient code, optimized code, to, uh, to make sure that we don't spend a lot of time sorting these 100,000 players. So, good, let's take a look at a simple algorithm. Let's assume that we're not thinking too much about what algorithm that we're going to develop. Uh, I'm going to reduce this to a list of five scores, here they are. And we're gonna take a look at a simpler algorithm to demonstrate uh, what the difference is between a naive and slower algorithm versus when we optimize what kind of speed improvement we can get. So let's take a look at the slow algorithm here. We have two, four, five, one, two, five, one, three, four. And this algorithm will be first, we're going to scan through our list and find the highest number here. So in order to do that we have to look at every number in the list because we never know if the last number is going to be the highest number. So we scan through every item and we see that 5 is the highest item. So we're going to remove that from the list and then transfer it to a new list as the first item. And then we're going to repeat this process. Okay, We look again, we see through the remaining entries 2, 1, 3, 4, Four is the highest, so we're going to remove it from this list and transfer it to a new list at the end of this list because it is the second largest item. And we keep doing this. We see that three is the next largest item, so we put three here. We remove it from this list. We put two here. We remove it from the list. We put one here. We remove it from the list. Now we have sorted our five scores. So this is a... a um, a simple algorithm. I'm going to write out really quickly the steps while the input is not empty. Find the highest score. Add it to the output and remove it from from the input. Okay, this is pseudocode, so this isn't C or C++ like we've been using, uh, but you can see that there are two sorts of loops in here. We have this loop right here, okay, while the input is not empty, so we're going to end up going through every item, I'm sorry, we're going to end up going through this list uh, 100,000 times because we have 100,000 things in our input list. And then there's also this loop right here. I haven't really written it as a loop, but there is a loop in there. It's find the highest score because we have to loop through every item in the list to find the highest score. So now let's take a look at um, if we have 100,000 items in our list, then how many times do we have to touch an item of data in the list in order to sort this list. So our first pass through, our first pass through, we have not taken anything out, and so we have to look 100,000 times. We have to look at every item in this list. So we say 100,000, okay? And then the next time through, we've removed one thing, and that, that being the highest score. And so we look at the remaining things to find the second highest score, and so we have to look at 99,999 things. And then we continue, we remove the second highest score, and we look at 99,998 things, and so on, 
until there are only two things left and then one thing left. And then, if we want to know how many times we've looked at any piece of data in total, we add all of this up. So in other words, we're just adding all of the numbers between one and 100,000. And there's a nice formula that lets you do that. Here it is. In this case, n, n is 100,000. This, this is a formula for adding all the numbers between one and n. If you add all the numbers between one and n, uh, you can just plug n into this formula and it will give you the answer. It may be a good exercise to try it with some small numbers like one, two, or three. But in this case, we're gonna plug 100,000 into it. So we're going to have 100,000 times 100,000 plus one over two. Now I'm not interested in the exact answer. I'm really only interested in um, an approximation. And we have an a thousand, a hundred thousand here, plus uh, I'm sorry, times another one hundred thousand. So it's going to be something in the order of one hundred thousand squared, which is about ten billion. Ten billion. That's awful. Ten billion. We have a hundred thousand players. There's no reason why we need to do ten billion operations in order to sort a list of 100,000 players, it's too many. But we know better algorithms. Um, the most recent one we've covered in this series was heap sort, which we used in our graph uh, theory section when we studied graphs to speed up Dijkstra's algorithm. And uh, in, in a heap sort, instead of having on the order of 100,000 squared items that you have to look at in order to sort this list, it would be more like 100,000 times log base two of 100,000. Logarithm grows very slowly and so 100,000 times logarithm base two of 100,000 is going to be much less than 10 billion. It's actually going to be, I shouldn't write equals I should write about equal to about 1.6 million. 1.6 million is a lot less than 10 billion. And so I think we would much prefer to have an algorithm that takes um, in the order of a few million pieces of data to examine in order to sort the list instead of 10 billion. And so we expect the the sorting algorithm that we established here, the naive and slow sorting algorithm, to be something like a, a, a thousand times slower than the heap sort. Uh, so to demonstrate to that to you, we're going to go to the code section and look at a simple heap sort, and this is actually called insertion sort. We're gonna look at an insertion sort and a heap sort and see how fast they are compared to each other. Before we start, let's take a look at this drop down right here. Usually you can't see it, but I have it set to debug, which means to turn all the compiler optimizations off. But today we are going to set it to release, which means to turn all the optimizations on. Because I want to demonstrate to you that we can do optimizations better than the compiler can. So we're going to let the compiler have its go at the algorithms that we're developing here. And we're going to show you, we're going to show that even with all those optimizations, our hand optimized code is going to be much, much faster. So we make a, an array of 100,000 players uh, and we fill it with random data. And then we make a copy so that we can have the exact same data in, in both algorithms so that we have a fair comparison. So we're going to um, we're going to sort the same exact array using two different algorithms and then score sorted is going to receive the sorted data. And we're going to compare the difference. So this is the same algorithm that I had in the math section of the video. We have one loop which continues to go for as long as the, uh, the array has content. And then we have another loop which searches for the highest score. 
And then we add the highest score to the sorted array, and then we remove it from the original array so that it's not present in the next pass. Okay, and let's take a look and see how long that takes. How long does it take to sort 100,000 players? And nothing is showing up, so I guess it takes a little while, doesn't it? There we go. So the highest score is, and we have to print out this highest score so that the compiler doesn't just optimize everything away. The highest score is about two, uh, what is that, two billion. And it took 8.8 .8 seconds to do that. And remember, it had to touch about 10 billion pieces of data in order to do this. Now let's take a look at the heap version that we covered in a previous video. We build a heap, and then again we have two li uh, loops. We have, while the scores are not empty, and then there's a loop hidden in here that you can't see, but the difference is that this loop only touches log base two times uh, log base two of 100,000 items. It doesn't touch all 100,000 items. So log base two of 100,000 is about 16. So that's where we get 1.6 million from. And then of course we do the same thing. We remove it from the sorted list. Uh, I'm sorry, we add it to the sorted list and remove it from the input list. Now let's see how long that takes in comparison. It's already done. It took 11 milliseconds. So 8.8 .8 seconds versus 11 milliseconds. I think that is a pretty significant um, optimization and I hope you'll agree. So next time we are going to examine much more closely different time types of algorithms and what are their running times? How long does it take for each of them to crunch through the same amount of data? See you next time.